Good evening and welcome to TC Network. I am Tingnay Team Hokey bringing you today's news. Today's top headlines include Manipur Tribal Body Slams, Biran Singh's Alex misleading statement on immigration and poppy cultivation. Cookie Body rejects that forces deployment plan in Kangchuk Lemahong region. Heavy rain, hailstorm wreck havoc, certain parts of Manipur, leaves trials of destruction, many injured. The cookie in P. Manipur has launched a scathing rebuttal against Manipur's Chief Minister N. Biren Singh, challenging his assertion space, illegal immigration, the environment, poppy cultivation, unnatural villages, and looted arms in the region. Labeling the Chief Minister's statement as misleading and dangerously false, the cookie apex body delved into the facts to set the record straight. Contrary to Chief Minister N. Biren Singh's claims of peace returning to Manipur, the cookie in P. Manipur stated that the Alex grim reality of escalating violence on the ground. Furthermore, the cookie in P. highlighted the Alex attacks on cookie villages by state-supported forces, questioning the validity of claims of peace in Manipur. Regarding the Chief Minister's assertions on illegal immigration, the cookie in P. Manipur refuted his narrative, stating that it is a gross misrepresentation aimed at demonizing specific communities without substantiated data. Clarifying the situation, the apex body stated the absence of illegal immigrants from Myanmar in Manipur, debunking claims of illegal settlements as alleged by Biren Singh. Addressing concerns over environmental issues and poppy cultivation, the cookie in P. Manipur accused Biren Singh of targeting the cookie people without these indigenous claims. The apex body pointed out discrepancies in forest cover between hills and valleys, suggesting a lack of environmental focus in the valley region dominated by Maytays. Furthermore, allegations against the cookie regarding environmental degradation were dismissed as unfounded and a deliberate attempt to divert attention from pressing issues. On the matter of unnatural villages, the cookie in P criticized Biren Singh's cultural insensitivity towards cookie traditions. The apex body defended the establishment of such villages, citing cultural and resource management purposes integral to cookie customs. Regarding the assertion of looted arms, the cookie in P condemned Biren Singh's justification for arming Maitei youths under the guise, guise of self-defense. Accusations of arming partisan forces and the involvement in significant arms looting incidents further cast doubt on Biren Singh's governance and commitment to peace. In response, the cookie in P vote to contest these falsehoods through legal means, emphasizing the importance of preserving the truth and the dignity of the cookie people amidst misleading narratives. The cookie in P Southwest Southern Hills has voiced strong opposition to the purported deployment and establishment of Manipur State Forces, including the Indian Reserve Battalion or the IRB. Outposts in the conflict torn Kangchuk and Lemakung regions within the Sadar Hills Kangpokpi district. As per the Hills Journal, the General Secretary of the Kuki in P. Southwest Sadar Hills, Thang Khup Dongil, said that recent developments have brought to light the state government's plans to deploy and establish state force outposts, notably at Kangchuk Gelzang village and other areas within Kangchuk and Lemakung. However, amidst mounting tensions following the Kukizo and Maytay conflict that erupted on May 3, 2023, and the subsequent handling of the conflict by state forces, including the Indian Reserve Battalion, there is a growing sense of mistrust and widespread skepticism regarding their presence and actions maintained Dongal. He also underscored that, in light of the current robust and effective security measures already in place by Assam Rifles and other central forces in the Kangchu and Lemahong regions, the deployment of additional state forces is deemed superfluous. Dongel further reiterated that, as the paramount authority representing the Kuki civil society in Lemahong and Kangchu areas, we vehemently oppose the pro pro proposed deployment of state forces in these regions. 
while earnestly arguing the attention of the SP Kangpopi to inform the higher authorities about their farm stance. Dongal cautioned that failure to do so may result in untoward incidents for which the state government will be held accountable. Heavy rain accompanied by hailstorm lasses, several parts of Manipur on Sunday, damaging houses and vehicles, officials said. Several houses were damaged in Kanchipur and Tera in Imphal West, with hail leaving holes in, this, in tin roofs. Strong winds also blew away hotmans in many areas, they said. In several areas, the hail formed a thick white blanket. Wind seals of four wheelers parked in the open developed cracks due to the hailstorm. Trees, trees were also uprooted by the winds. An official said that the mess was being assessed. The meteorological department has issued an orange alert of heavy to very heavy rain in several northeastern states, including Manipur, till Tuesday. CM and Berensing said his government would repair the houses that were damaged requires all those whose houses were damaged in today's heavy hailstorm to submit photographs to their respective deputy commissioner for immediate repair, he posted on Facebook. There was also reports of extensive damage to agricultural crops and livestock being killed by the hailstorm. Lauren Bambasan Singh, a 53-year-old man, was critically injured after being hit by lightning while he was working in Bedifield. At least 10 people were injured after being hit by blown-off roofing seats in Taubal districts. Roofing of around 60 houses in Payeng Maha Leikai, Sabal Leikai, Jinghuno, and Nungdaban areas were damaged. In Maitram and Malom area too, more than 50 houses suffered damage. Similar situations were also reported in Wanghai, Kongba, Singjame Turel Wangma, Irilbung, Teirao, Tongzhu, and Gobu Huno among others in Infal East. In Taubal districts, the mage of houses were reported in Kairem Bikok, Uyal, Wangbal, Langtabal, Hekman, Wangjing, Hairok, Hongzom Chingtam, Hangabok and Lei Sang Tim, Huma Nung areas among others. Two relief camps were set up in Hangabok Part 3 with the district administration distributing tarpaulin as immediate measures. Kakching district also reported similar situations in areas such as Sora Karanchi, Wabagai Mayai Leikai, Wabagai Maning Leikai, and Kairak Tomal Mahong with roads blocked by uprooted trees and fallen bamboos. In Tengnopal district, maximum damages were reported in Si Bung Mold and surrounding areas. Several uprooted trees fell upon IB complex in Moray Town, thereby damaging the buildings as well as police barracks. Speaking on the weather forecast, the Meteorological Department has issued an orange alert for heavy to very heavy rainfalls in several northeastern states, including Manipur, till May 7. Amid this, CMN Berensing announced closure of all educational institutes till tomorrow. All schools and colleges will remain closed on 6 May and 7 May 2024 due to the prevailing weather conditions in the state. The decision has been taken as a precautionary measure against the risk posed by the current weather conditions, the Chief Minister said in a post on X. The CM also issued health line numbers in wake of hailstorm impacting several areas. The IMD has forecast rainfall in different parts of the country. The IMD said that light to moderate rainfall with thunderstorm, lightning and gutsy winds are very likely over Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram and Tripura during next six days. As per news on air, these conditions will also be present over Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Bihar, West Bengal, Jharkhand and Odisha till the 9th of this month. In South India, these conditions will continue over Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana during the next four days. The weather agency said that maximum temperatures will rise by about 2 degrees Celsius over parts of northwest and central India during the next two days. No significant change is expected over the rest of the country. The Indian Meteorological Department has also forecast heat wave to severe heat wave conditions over parts of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Maharashtra, and Karnataka today. The IMD has said that these conditions will also prevail over Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh till the 9th of this month. 
Lamka District Hospital Casualty Department review its monthly data for the past four months from January to April and reported the following data as per their records. Five rape cases have been reported in the district within the past four months, which has increased in great percent as compared to the past year's records. Last year, two rape cases was reported in 12 months, but this year, within four months, five cases has already been reported. One case was reported on January, three cases on February, and one on March. In the month of April 2024, 403 patients have been admitted in the casualty ward due to accidents, trauma cases, and bullet injuries. For the month of April, due to various sickness, 3,159 3, patients visited the casualty ward out of which 218 cases were dog bites and the patients were given anti-rabies vaccine. 106 cases were maternity checkup, 13 overdose cases, 5 poisoning cases, 18 burn cases, and 3 snack bite cases. 10 dead patients were brought to the casualty ward this month. 3 were reported dead from the casualty ward. 19 were referred from other hospitals and 2 were referred to other hospitals. Out of the 3,159 patients who visited the casualty ward this month, 912 of them were admitted in different wards. Today at 10.30 a.m., the Journal Education Officer Sisipur held a district-level competition for elementary and secondary-level class 6 to 10 where they were conducted activities like essay writing, extempore speech, and painting at Synod Hall, IB Road. The competition was held by Youth and Eco Club under Sarvasika Abiyan. After the students registered their names, the competition began and was supervised by ZEO staffs and the teachers present. The schools which participate in the competition include Rengkai Government Higher Secondary School, Duibong Government Higher Secondary School, Vimala Raina High School, Bizang Lobuk High School, Kumbi Pukri High School, and Punghutang High School, respectively. After the competition ends, prizes were handed over to the winners by Jot Yo, Esther Ching Kim, AI Hup Chin Tang, and AI Tang Hugin. Prize winners of today's competitions are Initial Writing Competition, first Hoi Lu Kim, Kim C Class 9 of Vimala Raina High School, second Tang Min Lon Class 8 of Bizang Lobuk High School, third Vak Nai Ning Kip Gen Class 10 of Kumbi Pukri Junior High School. In Painting Competition, first Tang Gong Mang Class 8 of Rengkai Government High School, second James Kup Min Tang Class 9 of Vimala Raina High School. Third, Jin Neijing Class 7 of Bizang Lobuk High School. In Extempore Speech Competition, first, Jing Bei Hoi, Class 10 of Rengkai Government Higher Secondary School. Grace Dimboi Tim, Class 9 of Duibung Government High School. Third, Lam Nei Hoi, Class 9 of Kumbi Pukri Junior High School, respectively. The ZEO staff during the program encourages the students to do, to do their best in life and also hand that over. Consolation prizes to all the students who participated in today's program, organized by the Youth and Eco Club. National Testing Agency conducted the National Eligibility Come Entrance Test NEET Undergraduate Exam 2024 yesterday, the 5th of May 2024. In Lamka District, the exam center is at Rayburn College, Gangpi Mall, and was conducted from 2 p.m. till 5.20 p.m. Around 1,000 candidates appeared and need examination at Rayburn College, and the exam was conducted successfully without any unwanted situations coming up during the examination. The candidates came from Gangpopi, Moray, and in, er and in and around Lamka District as well. National Eligibility Come Entrance Test is conducted by the National Testing Agency for admission to undergraduate MBBS BDS IUS courses every year. As per Government of India, it is a mandated requirement to qualify NEET exam to study medical courses in India and abroad. The languages in which the NEET UG 2024 will be conducted are English, Hindi, Assamese, Bengali, Gujarati, Kannada, Malayalam, Marathi, Odi, Odia, Punjabi, Tamil, Telugu, and Urdu. By cracking the NEET exam, candidates can pursue different courses in the medical field after class 12. Authorities grant admission to MBBS, BDS, BAMS, BYNS, BUMS, BSMS, BHMS, BVSC, and AH at nursing courses through NEET scores. 
The Meda Coaching Institute to show their happiness over the achievement of need exam center in the district and also to encourage the students to continue pursuing their dreams, distribute their refreshment to the candidate who were writing their need exam. The Senapati District Students Association, SDSA, has made a clarification regarding the viral photo of three girls alleged to have raped a boy and another photo of a shirtless boy with red marks on his face alleged to be the victim. The photos of the three girls and the boy with red marks have been going viral lately in social media. Some social media users have been claiming that the boy has been raped by the three girls. In its clarification, SDSA stated that the viral photo of the three girls is related to the missing case of three minor girls who went absconding from home and were later apprehended after a hectic search. Loitering around with friends on 17 of April 2024, said the Hills Journal. After being handed over to their respective guardians, two of the girls absconded from their home again and were reported missing again on the 24th of April 2024 and ongoing efforts are being met to locate them, stated a release issued by SDSA. The association clarified that the photo of a, of a shirtless boy with red marks on his face alleged to be the victim of rap is not a victim, but rather someone who assisted in the girls absconding from the guardians and the police, stating that it is imperative to recognize that such matters are sensitive matters involving minors. SDSA added that allegations of sexual offenses against minors carry several legal consequences under the Postco Act 2012. Besides, any dissemination of false information or baseless accusation is not only harmful but also illegal stated the release. SDSA also cautioned that those found spreading such misinformation will be dealt with strictly under the law. The association urges the public to exercise caution and responsibility in sharing information on social media platforms. Verifying the accuracy of information before dissemination is crucial to prevent the propagation of false narratives and protect the integrity and well-being of all individuals involved, the release aided. Today, the 6th of May 2024 marks the completion of a year of the constitution of Technopal District Village Volunteer. The district organizes a Thanksgiving program in regards to the completion of one year since their institution. Our neighbors, the Meite, had suddenly and surprisingly declared war upon us and the war has lasted for over a year now. The Technopal area also formed village volunteers in order to safeguard and protect themselves from the invading Meite militants and today marks one year since their institution and the Thanksgiving program was organized. Many CSO leaders of the district attended the program. Speeches delivered by the leaders during the program overall co covers issues regarding the unending war. The leaders encourage the volunteers to be courageous and not to fall back in the hands of the enemies. The war is unlikely to end quickly and might possibly last another year, and as such, unity should prevail among us. We should take part more dedicatedly than the past. They also requested those people who left the villages to return back and take part in fighting and protecting the village with their fellow men. The attendees salute and give respect to the martyrs during the program, and awards were also given to the village volunteers as per their contributions and achievements they made in the past while fighting to protect their land and people. Zoro Reunification Organization Zoro has announced plans for a peaceful rally on May 16, 2024 at the Indo-Myanmar border to protest against the Indian government's decision to fence the border and abolish the free movement regime. The decision was made during a meeting held at the Joro General Headquarters in Treasury Square on Tuesday, chaired by R. Sankoya, President of Joro. The meeting revolved ar around decisions regarding the implications of fencing the border. Members expressed strong opposition to the decision to scrap the FMR, stating that it signifies a move towards dividing brethren and further oppressing Joro children. They emphasized their firm stance against it and announced plans for the peaceful rally to be held at the Burma border. Joro has called upon all Mizo people as well as individuals from Burma to join the rally in solidarity. Additionally, they have urged Boulder villages to participate in the protest. 
This announcement follows a demonstration held in February at the Vanapa Hall premises, where the NGO Coordination Committee in Mizoram, comprising five major NGOs, also voiced their strong opposition to the scrapping of the FMR. During the demonstration, hundreds of protesters from various age groups gathered, displaying placards with slogans such as, We don't want boulder fencing, highlighting the widespread discontent regarding the government's decision. The BJP government will never change the constitution or end reservation defense minister, Rasnath Singh said, accusing the Congress of creating fear psychosis and resorting to spreading misinformation for vote bank politics. In an interview with PTI, Mr. Singh blasted the Congress for spreading concerns that the BJP will change the constitution if it returns to power and especially asserted that there was no question of changing the preamble of the constitution. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi has been alleging that the BJP will tear up and throw away the constitution if it retains power. Some other Congress functionaries had expressed apprehensions that the BJP may drop the word secularism from the preamble of the constitution. Congress brought constitutional amendments 80 times. They changed the preamble during the emergency of defense ministers saying B the BJP will never change the constitution. Constitution makers never imagined that there would be changes in the preamble. You Congress only acted to hurt the core idea of the Constitution, Singh said. There is no question of changing the preamble of the Constitution. They changed it and now they are making baseless allegations again, against us, he added. The preamble to the Constitution of India presents the principles of the Constitution. The 42nd Amendment in 1976 changed the description of India from a sovereign democratic republic to a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic. They, Congress, are trying to get people's support by instilling fear among the citizens, Singh said. I would suggest that they should try to get people's support by creating confidence and not by instilling fears. Electoral campaigns should be based on facts, he said. On Friday, Gandhi alleged that Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the BJP and the RSS are attacking India's democracy continuously and want to destroy the country's constitution. The Congress is creating fear psychosis and resorting to spreading misinformation for vote bank politics, the defense minister said. On the issue of reservation, also, he alleged that the Congress is misleading the nation. The Congress is trying to mislead people. There will no, not be any end to the reservation. They are making false allegations against us, Singh said. The Congress has asked BJP leaders to clear the party's stance on whether it will remove the 50% cap on reservation for the scheduled castes, scheduled tribes and other backward classes. We will not tinker with the reservation at all, Singh said, when asked about the Congress call to clarify on the 50% cap. Five Indian, five Indian Air Force personnel were injured and one fatally in an ambush by armed terrorists in Pung's district. Counter terror operations are ongoing. Five personnel of the Indian Air Force were hurt, with one of them succumbing to his injuries at a hospital later, as armed terrorists ambushed on IAF convoy at Lasana Top in Surankote, Tessil of Pune's district on Saturday, officials said. The attack happened at around 6.15 p.m. when two IAF vehicles were returning to their station, Sasitar, from Jarawali, and they came under attack. The armed terrorists opened indiscriminate fire before fleeing the spot. Officials were aware of the matter, said. Reinforcements were rushed to the area where counter-terror operations were launched. The local Rastria Rifles Unit started cordon and search operations in the area, the official said. An Indian Army Force Vehicle Convoy was attacked by militants in the Pons district of JNK near Sasitar. Cordon and search operations are underway, presently in the area by local military units. The convoy has been secured and further investigation is under progress, the IAF said in a post on X. While the vehicles have been also secured inside the air, 
based in the general area near Salshitar. The injured personnel were rushed to the hospital, where one of them succumbed to his injuries. In the ensuing gunfight with terrorists, the air warriors fought back by returning fire. In the process, five IAF personnel received bullet injuries and were evacuated to the nearest military hospital for immediate medical attention. One air warrior succumbed to his injuries later, the IAF post said. Further operations are owned by the local security forces. One of the trucks in the IAF convoy bore the maximum brunt of the attack with several bullets piercing its windscreen and side. The, ter the terrorists, who were armed with AK assault rifles, are believed to have fled into the nearby forest, the official said. Police assisted by paramilitary forces have been carrying out searches in Poons Town since Friday, following inputs about the movement of suspected persons. However, no one was arrested during the operation, the official said. Officials cited above said that the ambush bore similarities with the April 2023 ambush when terrorists shot dead five soldiers. Saturday evening's attack was a replica of the Tota Gali ambush in Pons district of April 20, 2023, when armed terrorists ambushed an army vehicle and shot dead five soldiers, the official said. The area has dense forests and the road meanders along the serpentine hills. Besides an IAF station, the army also has a camp there. The attackers, it seems, use dense forests and undulating terrain to their advantage to ambush the vehicles, the officials said. The attack has come days before Poons goes to the polls on May 25 as part of the Anannak Rajori Lok Sabha constituency. The polling for the constituency was rescheduled by the Election Commission April 30 after leaders across the political divide sought rescheduling due to adverse weather conditions. The Election Commission has asked the Jammu and Kashmir administration to immediately submit a detailed report of the road conditions, weather and accessibility to the region, which covers parts of South Kashmir and areas in Poonch and Rajouri in Jammu region. The polling was initially scheduled to be held on May 7 in the third phase of the seven-phase elections. The Jammu and Kashmir Congress condemned Saturday's attack in a statement. Brothers Congress Committee President Vikar Rasul Wani said that repeated terror attacks on the forces need to be responded to strongly and underlined the need to check the rise in terror activities in Jammu and Kashmir. We condemn the terror attack on the IAF personnel. We express our grave concern over the escalated attacks by terrorists in various parts of Jammu and Kashmir, especially in Rajouri Poons Belt, resulting in loss of several precious lives of our Jawans and officers, Wani said. The Boulder district of Poons, along with adjoining Rajouri, has witnessed some major terrorist attacks over the past two. The latest incident in the Pir Panjal region follows the killing of government employee Maud Rajat, brother of an army personnel, by terrorists in Rajouri Skunda Top on April 22 and village defense guard Maud Sarif in the Basangard area of Udampur on April 28. Police have released pictures of two Laskar e Taiba. Terrorists, including suspected Pakistani national Abu Hamza, involved in the murder of Rajak and announced a cash reward of rupees 10 lakh for information leading to his arrest. The Bufflets ambush in December last year came weeks after a major gunfight in the Darmsel belt of Bajimal forest in Rajouri that left five army personnel, including two captains, dead. Two terrorists, including top LED commander Kari, were also killed in the two-day gunfight. Kari was said to be the masterminds behind several attacks, including the killing of 10 civilians and five army personnel in the district. The stress between Dera, Kigali, and Bufflites on the boundary of Rajouri and Poons is densely forested and leads to Chamrir Forest and then Bata Durain Forest, where five soldiers were killed in an ambush attack on an army vehicle on April 20 last year. In May last year, five more army personnel were killed and a major rank officer was injured in the Chamrir Forest during an anti terrorist operation. A foreign terrorist was also killed in the operation. That was all for today's news and have a pleasant evening ahead.